Thank you very much. That's a warm welcome. Thank you very much to all of you who are um, sitting here in the audience and listening to me. Um, well, it was just told that uh, Regina Sixt had a very or has a very long-lasting relationship with DLD. She was one of the founding members of um, the DLD Women Conference, and also Alexander Sixt. He was presenting last year here, so I heard that about 10, 20 percent uh, of the audience uh, who was here last year is also going to be here this year. And I'm going to use one quote that he that he um, mentioned last last year, and that is uh, the correlation between attention of the audience and basically um, the speaker, the nationality of the speaker, the time of the year before lunch seems to be a very, very bad moment of talking. And uh, also German doesn't really help me a lot. And he also said that after 20 seconds, I've lost about 20% of you. That's not good. After two minutes, I'm going to lose another 20%. And after five minutes, I have lost 75% of you. The only positive nose, note on this is that most of those 75% are going to engage in sexual daydreaming. <clears throat> so, I'm going to destroy this for you now. <clears throat> um, anyway, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about attention and also awareness and a little bit about uh, branding and how this all kinds of uh, uh, mixes together in order to be, to be successful. And I would like to start with one uh, big picture that um, shows Times Square. And of course, that's not our everyday situation, not our everyday, let's say, a surrounding and the countryside and all that. But it also gives you uh, just, a, just a small glimpse on how many stimuli uh, we receive every, every day. Uh, in fact, some researchers say that uh, we receive between 3,000 and 20,000 uh, stimuli every day, advertising stimuli. And of course, if you don't stand out, you won't be heard, right? So it makes, makes sense that you kind of need to uh, draw the attention to your brand and also to your, um, to your uh, company and to yourself. So... Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that most of you will understand that uh, attention is key. However, I would like to extend that to something else, because I believe attention can only be the start. Otherwise, people wouldn't invest so much money in a, in a, in a, in a brand. Let's just take the example of Starbucks. I bet a lot of you uh, went this morning to get a coffee at one of, uh, one of the main uh, coffee houses or chains, and usually the average price is something like 3.25 dollars for a normal coffee. So if I just ask you, what would you think is the most uh, expensive ingredient in this coffee? Any, any idea? Any clue? The brand. The brand. Well, um, you spoiled it there. <laughs> Somebody said uh, the milk. Um, a lot of people would think uh, that it should be the coffee, right? The coffee is only 12%. Sorry, it's not even 12%, it's 12 cent. 12 cent out of 325 cents. The packaging, and that's what I find is interesting, is the most expensive ingredient. And let me tell you, the packaging is only 24 cent. So 24 cent plus 12 cent is 36 cents. That's 11 percent out of the whole price that you pay. So the remaining 89 percent is for all kinds of stuff. It's, it's of course, for salaries, like um, for the staff. But that's also only a quarter, and the, rem remaining, um, the rem remaining price is basically for the brand, for the locations and all that. And I think that is so uh, inspiring that people pay so much money for a product that is really, I don't want to say of low quality, but is, is, uh, accounts for so little of the expense of the product. And there's one, one other example that I would like to give you, which I find uh, even more interesting, and that's the difference between Samsung and Apple. I know that a lot of people say nowadays that, well, maybe Apple's not going to sell so many products of the iPhone uh, 7 or 7S or whatever the next iPhone is going to be, but just look at this, this very boring um, uh, pie chart, right? So that's going to show you as of November 2015, I know it's, uh, it's last year, but I think it's still quite accurate. It's going to show you the global smartphone shipments uh, and the share of that, of that. So the gray is basically all the others that are not uh, Samsung or uh, Apple. And then if you look at Apple, it's 14.5%. So 85% are not coming from Apple. 
So even though I'm a marketing guy, I, need to, I understand that uh, it's all about revenues and um, profits in the end. And uh, I think it's, look at that, it's quite uh, interesting to see that 94% of all global smartphone profits are coming from Apple. So with the share of only 14.5%, they're going to make, make almost 100% of, of the profits. So you might now think, okay, so that's 94%, Samsung 6%, where, where are all the others? That, that, that's up to 100, right? All the others, according to that research, are not making any money on the smartphones. Any money. So what, what's, what's the reason for that, right? What's, what's the backbone? And um, we just looked at the, the Forbes uh, list of valuable brands. And um, Apple is on the top. Samsung is down here. It's number 11. It actually went down from, I think it was number 8 or something last year. And uh, some of you might now argue, OK, so that's because Apple is doing a lot of advertising. In fact, Apple is out of this whole list the one that spends least. There's only IBM, which is uh, um, about, I think that's almost the same. It's 1.7 or something billion. But apart from that, they are all spending more than Apple. So it can't be the advertising. Don't get me wrong, I love advertising, right? So that's also what we do. That's, that's uh, for all the people who don't understand German, that's what we did last year with uh, Klaus Wieselski, the uh, train, uh, tra uh, train uh, the union head of the, of the train drivers. And it, we basically made him our employee of the month because you know, for uh, all the strikes that he did, he really helped us grow our business tremendously. So I love advertising. I think that's uh, interesting, but it can't be the reason why those brands are so, so important and also so successful. It must be something more. And I know that this concept about fans and customers is not, not new. But I, I, when, I, when you look at it, it's quite interesting to find out that there are some similarities also between other business kind, uh, sec kind of sectors. Mr. Dickinson, who is, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, he's, the, he's the lead singer of Iron Maiden. Uh, he once said that the difference between a brand and a band is the R. So you might think that's obvious, that's the word. But what he meant is that uh, really they are pretty, pretty similar, right? Both of them, they don't need customers. They need really good and high-profile fans to join them along the line. And you might not think, okay, so Iron Maiden, are they, are, are they really successful? Well, look at that picture. That's the plane of Angela Merkel. The plane behind that of the president of, uh, of, of France and the plane of Iron Maiden. <laughs> By the way, uh, Mr. Dickinson is also flying, so that might be the reason why, why he wants, wanted to have this big uh, plane. And there was, he argued once that he couldn't deal with a normal Boeing uh, because it was just too small. So, that, that, that proves that he must uh, understand a little bit of it. The good thing about fans is that they do something um, what you can't do or what you just don't do. So that was an advertisement that was done by a fan. It says um, the train is coming. Yeah, uh, Just another example for the strikes because they, um, you know, they basically helped us again. Um, that was not an advertising of us. In that case, we just let it happen because it was picked up by the press and all that. So pretty uh, interesting stuff. I'm not encouraging anyone to use our brand symbols or nothing, right? So I'm not doing this here. But um, well, I just wanted to showcase that sometimes fans do something that other people wouldn't do and that customers wouldn't do. And that's why it's so important to maybe look at that a little more in detail. So fan, I don't want to bore you with that, but uh, it could be a devotee. Uh, and also a follower of not only a sport or celebrity or uh, anything like that, but also also a brand. I would like to uh, I would like to focus maybe uh, a minute, the next minute on the differences because I think a lot of you have seen that. But if you just recollect what customers do and what custom what what fans don't do or vice versa, the customers they need to be enticed while the fans really come on their own. And I think that's really especially for businesses quite interesting. Customers seek discounts while fans promote. Customers criticize and fans forgive. That's especially true when you want to have loyal fans and loyal customers. And who doesn't want loyal customers, right? And then customers leave and fans remain. And I hope that this is not just true for Iron Maiden, but also very true for us. 
So but the big question might be, um, how do we turn the, the customers kind of into fans? Because nowadays, a lot of people would argue that they have the choice. And I want to show you something. I'm, as you know, I'm from Sixth, and I don't know if they really always have the choice. Look at that. Here it says, rent the newer, rent the safer, rent the greener, rent Europe car, 10% off. I don't see any safeness in that. The people are not buckled up, nothing like that. You know, somebody probably said, you put some sex in there, so there's the kiss. And uh, I don't see any new or green. So why would you rent this if you can instead rent a car that you will want your ex to see you in? And that's a real kind of ad <clears throat> that we did in the UK. So, of course, that's just an example, uh, and just an e example of a car, right? So, we, we rent the i3, i8, i a lot of BMWs, and we have a very, very strong partnership with them. Um, and I just, I just I don't understand why anyone says they have a choice in car rental. They don't. Uh, well, that's at least what I think. Let me, let me kind of end off with, um, uh, because I only, it says I only have two and a half minutes left, uh, let me kind of end off with four notes that I think are important here. First of all, to turn customers into fans, I, I really believe that it's uh, crucial to understand and also engage with your customers. And understanding doesn't just mean that you're listening, I also believe that understanding means that you anticipate what those people want. And we just have, uh, we, we just heard a story about um, uh, cars that are driving themselves and all that. And I can tell you that that's also why we kind of changed the, the, the positioning of the company from just rent a car per day or per week or whatever into a company that is offering from one minute to uh, many years. So it's car sharing on the one hand, on the one side, it's limousine services and, uh, and all that, and also selling cars in the end. And we really would like to be the one-stop partner um, uh, along this line of, of mobility. The second one is I, I really believe that it's crucial to also cultivate a customer-obsessed culture. And um, this is something if Mr. Six or Eric Six would be standing here, he would always tell you that the client is the boss or the customer or the fan. You can, you can use whatever word you want. And this, um, this picture, that's a real poster that's hanging in most of our conference rooms. And he says that in, in every conference that he's talking about, he always says, it doesn't matter what we want. It all matters what the customer wants. And if we can't get him the right offer, we're going to lose out. And he always, the second thing he always says, and I think that's also very true, you need to provide a customer uh, experience that is consistent. And you can only do that if you have the right people. So that's why, for example, all our, um, all our stuff is incentivized by the uh, excitement of the customer. So we, we canceled out the word of uh, satisfaction. Satisfaction is enough for many of, uh, many of us, but not for the customers that we would like to um, really acquire and also uh, we would like to, uh, to make happy. So that's why we canceled that word and we, we, uh, and we are now going to look only at the ones that are excited and not satisfied anymore. That's, I think, um, pretty uh, interesting as well. And last but not least, and that's something that I said before, always, always, always exceed customer expectations. And there's one really strong um, remark that I that I read in a paper uh, about half a year ago, and that explained how customer excitement is, cor is correlated with um, something that's called dopamine, or dopamine in our brains. So whenever somebody is satisfied, he might go there again, but he might just switch to another company or um, compet uh, competitor. However, if you do something that is better than expected, that's the point where our, our brains, our human brains, which at the end of the day, we are a little bit more advanced animals, is going to release dopamine. Or dopamine. And this will work like a drug in our brains, and it will basically, um, it will uh, lead to the fact that you want to trigger exactly the same feeling again. So if a brand can do that, or a service can do that, that's the best that can happen to you, because then the people return, and they, they stay fans with you. So that's why I really believe that this whole um, concept of uh, releasing this drug, and I'm super happy to discuss it more in detail also over lunch later, uh, is so important. And that's also why I would like to end with that. I think it is not about customer satisfaction, it's about exciting them, and that has become our brand core. And you will also see more about this during lunch. So please, 
just um, join us for that. Also on behalf of um, Regina Sixt, who has, uh, as I said, a long-lasting tradition with DLD. And uh, please be, uh, feel free to ask any questions that you might have. And with that, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank